This episode is supported by Prudential. <laughs> you may have seen some videos doing the rounds online. The new British five pound banknote and the new Australian five dollar note being used as the needle for a record player. It's pretty cool, they actually play music. Oh, that's so cool. But like any story involving Britain and Australia, one of us had to do it better. It's a friendly rivalry. And according to some reports, the five pound note is so much more awesome than Australia's. So I felt like I had to look into it. I'm not letting my dollary dues go down unjustly. $900 And it turns out the science behind these two notes is exactly the same. They're made from the same technology and the same materials. But the interesting thing is that the new five pound banknote wouldn't even be around if it wasn't for the Australian dollar. Let me take you back in time. On February 14, 1966, Australia broke free from the mother country and released its own decimal currency. After a nationwide competition to name our notes, submissions included the Austral, Boomer, Quid and Ming, we settled on dollar. Pretty unoriginal. Around the same time, some guys in a Melbourne pub hatched a plan to print fake notes with simple office equipment. They pocketed $800,000 worth of forgeries in 1966, an adjusted value of over $10 million today. They got some serious bank. But the next year, most of the guys from the pub went to jail. It turned out one of them became a police informant. And there was a general distrust of $10 notes. Some unions wouldn't accept them in their pay packet. Let's call it the $10 side eye. Then the next year, 1968, if you're playing along at home, the Reserve Bank of Australia turned to the National Science Agency, CSIRO, and said, we need all of the science, or something to that effect. I couldn't actually find a quote, so I just made that one up. And they teamed up to create the Polymer Banknote, the world's most secure cash money that debuted in 1988. It underwent a lot of testing leading up to its release, like the field test that I found this picture of. Just gonna leave this up here for another second. From there, the polymer banknote technology kept improving and it's culminated in this $5 note that was released in September 2016. Look, there's the queen. Hi Liz, if you're watching, please subscribe. These banknotes have a fair bit of bling, like this transparent window that has an optically variable device. It splits and diffracts light into several beams so their appearance changes when the note is viewed in different directions. In fact, the anti-counterfeiting features of these notes are full of cool party tricks. If you carry a clip-on microscope lens around in your handbag like I do, you can see the microtext printed on the $10 note. I wish I was joking, but I do actually take this everywhere. On Australia's tenor, there's the poem The Man from Snowy River, which has printed a shading behind the man who wrote it, Banjo Patterson. There's a bunch of microtext on notes where it looks like shading. Where the wild bush horses are, and the stock horse snuffs the battle with $10, $10, $10, $10, $10. Isn't that great? On the new $5, it says $5, $5, $5, $5. You get the picture. But of course, the best party trick you can do is to use the note as a record needle. Really, you can use the older notes, but the new ones just work better because they're super crisp and don't have as much wear and tear. Okay, let's see if I can actually do this. The polymer these notes is made from is called BOPP, or BOP, kind of fitting in this case. And it's a non-fibrous and non-porous material. It has a strong plastic structure, and while they're really flexible, they also have rigid, sharp corners, more than other fibrous materials like paper. Those pointy corners are the key to making music, because they ride along the groove in the record, and the tip of the note vibrates back and forth in the groove. It kind of wiggles around in there. The rest of the note carries these vibrations along its length, and the air around the note vibrates too. The bank note actually just amplifies the sound, just like those big horns on something more old school, like a phonograph. 
Our brains decode these vibrations to give us the sensation of sound, all being created by the beautiful harmony of a record and these dollar 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 bills. Yo. And in the last 20 odd years, this polymer banknote technology has been licensed to 24 other countries. It's used in notes from Canada to Mexico, but not in between. Seriously, these are terrible. So thanks for using our Australian science, Britain, and all of those other countries around the world too. Please don't claim to have a better banknote than the humble dollarito. I hope everyone realizes how cool these things that you just have in your wallet are. Thanks to Prudential for sponsoring this episode. It's human nature to prioritize present needs and what matters most to us today. But when planning for your retirement, it's better to prioritize tomorrow. According to a Prudential study, one in three Americans is not saving enough for retirement, and over 52% are not on track to be able to maintain their current standard of living. Go to prudential.com slash save more and see if you start saving more today, you can continue to enjoy the things you love tomorrow. I want that cash.